the University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals. Welcome to the University of Huddersfield. It's Halloween, it's going to be Guy Fawkes Night in a few days' time, so we thought, what better way than combining the two than with an absolute classic chemistry flash and bangs demonstration. So we're going to do the self-carving pumpkin trick. So how do we get a pumpkin to carve itself? Well, the first thing we need is the pumpkin. And the way we do this is that we first carve the pumpkin as you normally would on Halloween. You carve off the top, you dig out the middle, and then you carve out the pieces for the face. But you don't remove the pieces, you leave them sat in the, in the shell of the pumpkin. Then inside the pumpkin what we do is, make a is put together a chemical mixture that will produce an explosive mixture. That explosive mixture we ignite, we get an explosion, the increased pressure inside our pumpkin forces out the pieces that we've cut in, at very high speed. And what we're left with is a pumpkin that's carved in about a millisecond. So first, we've got to carve our pumpkins. Whilst this is all good fun, we are professional scientists and so, of course, there is a serious side. I'm interested in carbohydrates and in more particularly in polysaccharides, so that's long chains of sugar units. So polysaccharides have been used a lot in the food and pharmaceutical industry for a long time for their, for their binding ability, for their thickening ability, for their gelling ability. But also there are some polysaccharides which have been shown to have some true therapeutic value in themselves. And in developing worlds, they are still used quite often in, in, as functional medicines. So even, even in, in the Western world, in Europe, if we get stung by a nettle, we'll rub the, the, the leaves of the dock leaf on us on our hand for example and that's a, a type of, of polysaccharide called pectin that's found in that dock leaf that has a therapeutic effect on, on the sting. So polysaccharides are long chains of, of, of sugar molecules made up of, of what, thousands or tens of thousands of, of sugar molecules joined together in a, in a chain with varying degrees of branching. So when we talk about a sugar molecule for example here we have a, a, a glucose molecule, in this case alpha glucose. So, and so a number of these molecules. So this is in the in the ring the ring form of glucose, and this, these molecules will join together. And each of these hydroxyl groups, the the red oxygen here, we haven't shown the hydrogen for clarity. The the we can have bonding to another sugar at each of these hydroxyl groups. So, for example, one of the the um, main types of um, polysaccharides that people might be most familiar with is starch, which is in fact a mixture of two different types of polysaccharide. So this is the pumpkin that we were talking about and preparing earlier on. And what we've done is we've taken the, the, the pumpkin flesh and it's been suspended in, in about 90% ethanol because the polysaccharides are insoluble in ethanol but many of the other components in the pumpkin will be soluble and that way we should get a fibrous precipitate of polysaccharide. Here we've done something very similar for another member of the pumpkin family, butternut squash. And again, here maybe if you look more closely you can see the, the white fibrous material at the bottom of this melon extract. Hopefully the fibrous material at the bottom is some polysaccharides that we can do something with later. Polysaccharides uh, from certain plant materials have been known for a long time to have therapeutic um, and actions. For example, these from the, the pumpkin family have often been associated with um, the ability to lower blood sugar levels, which might be of interest in the treatment of diabetes, so their hypoglycemic polysaccharides are, are known to be, are thought to be present in the, in the pumpkin family. So that's what we're, their aim is to look, try and extract these polysaccharides, purify them, characterize them, and then at some later point we may look to see what these hypoglycemic properties are. Okay, so once we've uh, extracted our, our polysaccharide, we generally tend to do a number of different 
experiments to either calculate the size or the, the, the sugar constituents of the molecule. So in this case, what we can do is we can take our polysaccharide and we can hydrolyze the bonds using strong acid. And in this case, this will tell us what the components of, uh, of the polysaccharide were. O on the screen here, we've just recently done a, a previous extraction on some um, melon polysaccharide. And we can see from the screen that it's, it's composed of some galactose, some glucose, and some mannose. And this peak here is probably rhamnose. This tells us what the components were of that polysaccharide. If we do some derivatization steps prior to hydrolysis and subsequent to hydrolysis, we can also have an idea of how these sugars were linked together in real space. Right, so that's the science sorted. Now, let's get on with this self-carving pumpkin trick. So how do we make our bang? Well, we're going to make our bang with a mixture of acetylene and oxygen. So the air contains 20% oxygen, but we're going to try and make an oxygen-rich atmosphere using a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. So we pour a bit of that in first, it decomposes and makes oxygen. So to make the acetylene, we then take a little pot of water, stick it inside the pumpkin, and we put in a few chips of calcium carbide. The calcium carbide fizzes, makes acetylene gas, and we stick a lighter in the back of our pumpkin. Spark. Boom. One self-carved pumpkin. That was a bit loud, wasn't it? 